Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tonight we're gonna to be talking about the Leo lunar eclipse or the blood moon eclipse in the sign of Leo. Now with this video and tonight, I'm really feeling called to focus more on our intuitive message or the intuitive side of this message. So I have a lot of things that I wrote down and that I sat with with that. This week for me personally was one that was revealing a lot of information and a lot of feelings, information within myself, and information around me. And it just felt like I had to kind of respect that and be quiet and receive it versus me kind of going forward with what I was expecting for myself and this week. That being said, I think that that's another reason why I kind of want to look at the astrology chart and allow the astrology chart to kind of guide and to create a template and a, another level of understanding, but I really want to, you know, move from an intuitive space when it comes to this reading for this full moon. And as I accepted that and as I allowed that to happen, a lot of messages kind of came pouring through and I was writing nonstop. So I hope that that's okay with you guys. And if not, then just make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because the next video ten will tend to focus a lot on the astrological aspects of the chart, which I know many of you guys really do like and appreciate as much as you love the intuitive message aspect and component of this. That being said, you know, the heart is the center of everything, especially when it comes to this lunar eclipse, this blood moon. And I see this as really, I mean, I, I feel like this is so cliche and you guys are probably so tired of hearing, hearing it, but it's following the heart. And I said this in one of my last videos of the week that just passed, which I saw it as almost like a heart explosion. Now, hopefully, you know, that's not literal. It should be a metaphor. But really, it's things and matters that have been sitting on the heart that finally have a moment, a chance to be released and to be expressed. Now, that is the epitome of Leo energy in a nutshell. It's all about exp expression, it's all about heart, it's all about love, it's all about creativity, and communicating from your authentic version of yourself. The moon falls in the sign of Leo, forcing that energy or highlighting that energy to the essence and the core of Leo vibe. But sitting directly opposite, uh, opposite of that is the sun. The sun rules Leo and the sun falls within the sign of Aquarius, Leo's opposite, of course, because that's what creates the full moon. But when, when the sun falls within the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius is the sign that brings energy that needs you to really kind of deviate from the norm. And it's interesting because I see Aquarius as an individual. I see Aquarius as separate from the whole a lot of the time. But for some reason when I look at this chart, it's very much connected to the collective. It's very much connected to others. Almost to the point where you are independent, but you are also responding to how human consciousness and how our world is collectively moving as a whole and learning from that and stepping in, in line with that. And the reason why I say this and I think the reason why I'm feeling this is because a lot of us right now are actually rebelling. So if you see this rebellion, like these acts of rebellion, rebellion, meaning like how we used to do things, we're doing things differently now. We're in the ways that we used to be suppressed, now it's almost like this uprising. So even though Aquarius is known for doing things differently and striking outside of the norm, the reality is, is that we're all under the same influence and we're feeling it as a whole. So I'm almost looking at, I almost see us kind of looking at, you know, not, not looking at, you know, to mirror what others are doing, but really like examining and seeing like what has worked for you, how is that working for you? And then you deviating from your normal routine, your normal day to day, in order to switch up, to break out, to break free. And that's so interesting and like the polar opposite of what I was even thinking that I would be talking about, especially when I work with Aquarius because again, I see Aquarius so much as the individual. I see so Aquarius as the independent who deviates from what everybody else is doing, but at the same time, it's like collectively, people are really switching things up right now. And the other thing is, I don't know why this is, but I see this connection to the other, the other half. And really kind of, I don't know if this is connecting with your friends, connecting with social media, being inspired by social media, being inspired by your tribe, and reaching out to them, whether that be Bahati Life, Bahati Vibe Tribe, 
or maybe another tribe outside of what it is that we have here, but really being inspired by them and then having and watching that, watching that inspiration, watching it ignite aspects within yourself from your heart space. So maybe it's you moving outside of your norm, outside of your normal circles, or let's say your normal day-to-day -day routine looks like one certain way. I'm almost seeing your heart pulling you to step outside of that to remove yourself from that, not because it's negative or bad, it's because there's something else out there that is pulling you. So you're gonna be connected to new people, new people that, in, that are innovative, people who are different, people who are doing things differently. You're gonna be connecting with those groups because your heart, they have something or they're doing something that your heart you know, loves and by connecting with them, you learn so much about yourself and you have an opportunity to express yourself through music, through art, through creative expression, through love. So let's say your tribe, let's say your family, let's say they're pretty much closed off when it comes to expressing their feelings and, and talking openly about you know, their fears or their, their, or being vulnerable. And you see within your, within the Bahati Vibe tribe or on social media that people are encouraging each other to speak on their vulnerabilities, to share their gifts and their weaknesses, their strengths and their weaknesses. And your heart feels that and resonates with that. So it rings true to you. And because you have, you know, uh, you are inspired by that because you are triggered by that in a way that is positive and constructive to your own personal growth, you then step outside of that box in order to match or to mirror or to learn from the collective. Do you see how all that kind of falls together? So it's really interesting what I'm in, like intuitively, you know, pulling, getting from the chart that I feel like as I'm saying this now, I wouldn't have been able to gather by just using astrology alone because astrology teach you, teaches you one certain way, but it's the intuitive, aspect of it that takes that reading to the next level and of course you guys know that that's how i do all of my readings i really blend and merge intuitive my intuitive gifts with the science the study and the math of astrology but yeah so that's what i'm seeing the other thing that i'm seeing the other component to that because i see that in one area but the other component is i'm really seeing people closing chapters from 2016, 2017, 2018. Now I know it's 2019, but as I'm looking at the chart, I just can't help but to feel like with these cycles, with Pluto and with Saturn and Jupiter, yeah, some doors have really closed, maybe because they were forced out of our lives or because they're no longer here or whatever the case is. And you moved on or that moved on or they moved on or whoever, <clears throat> but the heart, the heart for some reason is, I don't want to say tied to it, but it's still learning how to live and how to love without those components being present and without those components being there. And what I'm seeing is really, it almost seems like this like blood moon. It's, it's interesting that it is the blood moon because it really is like squeezing and expelling this essence this life force energy that has been filling us and fueling us but it everything serves its time everything excuse me everything serves its purpose and it's almost like that what that once filled you and once was all in your being now it's shed and it's completely moving on to this new cycle and new blood new energy new life force energy has to come in and i'm really seeing this with this with this full moon and with this eclipse. Now, it's up to you what it is that you're going to do with this full moon, if you're gonna be working your magic, if you're gonna be setting intention, if you're gonna be expressing, creating, whatever. I know I am. <clears throat> as, you know, as, you know, Jessica of Bahati Life and with the apothecary and as a witch, of course I'm gonna be conjuring. Of course there's things that, you know, I have set my intention on and there's in my spiritual journey there's a lot of things that it is that I'm working on that I'm focusing on and messages messages that I've been receiving that I will focus on the night of the eclipse so that's my intention that's my my plan but it's different it's different for everyone but I do see an emphasis on those of you guys who are interested in magic I do see fire magic I do see candle magic and I do see blood magic now before the internet comes for my neck and comes for, you know, me, 
I do have a video on blood magic and to each their own. If that's not something that you're comfortable with, don't do it. I'm not, I, my, my goal is not to come in here and force anybody to do anything that's not comfortable to them or that they don't like or that they don't want to do. At the end of the day, it's your decision. I'm just a messenger. You know what I mean? Like that's always how I've seen myself as a messenger for, for astrology and a messenger from the divine and like intuitive messages just kind of like flow through me from angels and guides. So ultimately it's up to you to decide what it is that you're going to do with this. But for those of you guys that are comfortable, I really do see an emphasis on blood magic. And I have a video about that on my YouTube channel that you can go ahead and search. The other thing that I'm seeing is writing down those components of yourself that no longer serve a purpose. The last thing I want, and I don't know why this is, I don't know the medical, like I don't understand the, the medical field, but I just, what I'm seeing is like blood being like circulated throughout the body and it gets pumped from the heart because the heart pushes it out. So everything that it is that you're feeling within your heart, the center of your body is being circulated throughout your entire essence of your being on a spiritual level, on an emotional level, on a mental level, on an energetic level. It's all, and physically, it's all connected. And what I'm seeing is like, if your heart is broken or if you have, even if you are functioning, it's and you are moving forward and you've said goodbye to certain things like are you actually in a space right now where you know things feel good to you or that you're open to love or you're open to abundance are you open to commu effectively and openly communicating the things that are on your heart your thoughts expressing yourself because it's almost like i'm seeing a cap on that and it's because you know whether it be your history or things that have happened to you in this life which happens to all of us these things that scar us or bruise us, they kind of, you know, they, they have an, an impact on the heart. When you feel sad, it's your heart that feels heavy. And those things don't just go away overnight. We can't, you know, pretend like they don't exist. They do exist. You can move forward as a human being because you have no choice but to move forward. But the heart still feels that. And I just, I don't know how long it takes for blood to move throughout the body, but the energy that I'm getting is again this like rotation and this flow that moves throughout the body and the time that it takes for that to happen. And if you guys want to go ahead and Google that and leave it down in the comments, like feel free, I'm going to Google it afterwards, like why that's the message that's coming through and that's the visualization that it is that I'm getting. But ultimately, what I'm seeing is prioritizing, and this is what I wrote down, it's prioritizing your heart and its health. It's saying goodbye and it's bleeding out. Now, I feel like that can be a trigger warning for those of you guys that do have, you know, um, you know, self-destructive tendencies or histories. And I'm not saying that you be self-destructive in any way, but what I am saying is that the aspects of yourself that are self-destructive, the aspects of yourself, and this could be people who actually do hurt themselves, or this is people who, who physically hurt themselves, but it's people who hurt themselves emotionally, who hurt themselves mentally, who hurt themselves spiritually because they cannot release and let go of this negative energy, this negative voice, this negative memory, this um, scar that falls on their heart that even though they themselves are moving forward as a physical being because they're a human and they have no choice, that whatever that is, that essence that is pumping throughout them from their heart, from their heart being stepped on or from them being disappointed or heartache, you know, I just see that kind of being like that, this full moon being the last of that. And with this full moon, you know, again, I see you bleeding it out. And by that, it's emotionally pouring it out. And that's where I see you kind of crying or releasing or writing it down or singing it out. There's something about music. There's something about creating an art that when you are writing it down through poetry that takes the, the feeling, that takes the heartache, that takes the rawness, the realness of what it is that you feel on your heart and it brings it to life and it's time to, to get it out. It's time to expel it. It's time to release that. In fact, Leo rules the arts. It rules creative expression. It rules moving from the heart your, your art comes from your heart. Your heart is your art. So whatever way that is for you. Now, I know many people, they kind of box themselves in, they kind of second guess themselves in, and this is, you can't sit and, and this is gonna come across really harsh, but this is not 
you know, when we look at astrology and when intuitives and guides and healers, when we say to you that this is what the energy is, this is what is happening, you have to use that as a tool in order to plan your next steps, in order to do things differently, in order to act upon that. If you decide to stay in a space where you simply will not allow yourself to bloom and to express and to allow that vulnerable side of you to be exposed, then that is your conscious choice. And you miss opportunity, you miss that moment, you miss the beauty of that, you miss the realness of that, the experience of it. Sometimes the only thing that you gain from it is the experience of just singing your heart's true song. And I just find this so funny because lately, I've actually been seeing that within my friend circle that I've been making here in New Orleans. We've been doing like karaoke night and we sing songs, my guys. Like we sing songs from our heart. And as silly as that sounds, just the fact, and you could see like the group, you know, you could see some, some of us in the group being like shy at first, but when one person decides to sing from their heart, the next person, it makes it okay for the next person to sing from their heart. It makes it okay for the next person. And collectively, we have this release through this thing that was originally could be silly, but it ends up being so incredibly powerful. And then you start to hear, wow, you have a beautiful voice. Like, I did not know that you were gifted in that way. And that's what it is that I'm seeing. It's like, that's my small metaphor, my small example, but it's just another aspect of of what New Orleans has brought to me and what I'm going through in my own spiritual spiritual journey and how it has looked it's never it's not always what it is that it seems and that's you really want to be open to this you really want to flow and allow the universe to allow your guides to heal you and to help you to open up and to bloom and to blossom in new ways and they will constantly present new opportunities for you but ultimately it's your choice it's your decision there's too many of us there's too many of you guys that sit and hear these messages and it rings true to you but then you're like you almost are like prove it or you're almost like i'm gonna wait when in reality it's you that has to decide to pick up the microphone to lift it to your voice and to let your voice be heard and whatever that means for you, if you have something that's sitting on your heart, it may not make sense to you. It's not destined to make sense to you. It's emotion, it's feeling, it's love, it's art, it's music, it's creative expression. You have to let it go and allow yourself to be completely overcome with it, to let it shine, to let that, to let that aspect of yourself shine. And that's what it is that I'm seeing by bleeding out it's releasing and, and it's also you being able to do that means that you are saying goodbye to those aspects that have happened that have brought you up to this moment to this day that have happened again in 2016 2017 2018 and i know that's like three years away but that energy still moves throughout you for whatever reason because the heart is still pumping it and again it's like if you have this memory if you're sitting sitting down somewhere and you see a picture and it reminds you of your grandmother who passed and it's like you know or you see her favorite flower your heart feels that pain as soon as it sees that flower but that heart is still pumping that blood and it's okay it's okay for you to feel sad it's okay for you to recognize that there is a loss there and that you miss them but over time Time goes on and time passes and you'll see that and it won't make you feel so sad anymore. It'll actually remind you of all the good times. It'll remind you of all the joy, all the love that she brought into your life. So then that's what the heart starts pumping that out. But that can only happen when it comes with time. And that's what is I'm seeing with this eclipse. And with the blood moon eclipse, it has finally, it's come to a point in this cycle for you, for me, for that person over there, for that person over there, for your friends, for your family, for your mother, for your father, for your boyfriend, for the person that you're crushing on, for your neighbor, whoever it is, your bus driver, your Uber driver, you finally come to that moment within your life, within the cycle, where you're saying goodbye to that old aspect, where something really has been shed here, and it's being released, it's being shed, it's just being expelled. Um, there's a few things that I wrote down expression expression was the biggest word and I, I wrote down why hold back why hold this back anymore don't hold it back anymore again you will consciously choose it's your decision it's your power to choose what it is that you're going to do are you going to tell this person that you love them are you going to tell them what's on your heart are you going to tell them that you're sorry are you going to tell them that they made, made that you made a mistake or that they made a mistake or whatever 
Are you going to give yourself the opportunity to expel it, to express it? Or are you going to swallow it and allow that ache, that suffering to keep pumping throughout your body? It's your choice to decide. And ultimately, you have no idea how you being, you know, called to express from your heart how it could change the outcome of your life forever. But it requires you to be brave. And I don't want to dismiss that. It really does require you to be, be, to be brave and to break out of your normal comfort zone, to break out of your normal way of doing things, which will be so foreign to you. But again, hopefully you have a tribe around you that's inspiring you um, and people speaking life into you. I hope that I'm that person within your life that you know comes in and gives you the sign and exactly when it is that you need it. At least I hope that I'm, I'm that I'm able to be that for you. But whatever it is, you know, it's just time to get it out. It's time to release. It's time to express. It's time to connect. And it may not be the most, you know, easy thing to do because there's a lot of fear and vulnerability connected to it, but it can change the course of the rest of your life forever. And that is worth it. The next thing that it is that I wrote down is astrology. The astrology chart will show you the potential, but if you don't act on it, if you don't allow that to flow through you, you will, you will never bloom. You will miss the opportunity. Now I know for a lot of you guys, you've been hearing me say a lot of, you know, it's time for us to flow and you guys are having a hard time for some of you having a hard time understanding when it's time to flow and when it's time to act because you feel like, well, if I'm not supposed to do anything, then if I do something, am I not flowing? But what I really want you guys to think about, and again, I had that metaphor of giving birth that I talked about on my Astro Live chat, and I, I'm more than happy to talk about that again in a, in, a, in a separate video, like a shorter video. But if you think about a flower, a flower just blooms. Like a peony is my favorite flower, by the way. So I'm gonna use that as an example. But a peony comes up and it's in this like tight little bud, a very tight bud. And it doesn't force it, it just is growing naturally. So when it finally gets to the point where it's being supported by the stem that's rooted into the earth, it then starts to feel that spark. Now is the time for me to bloom and it takes its time and it unfolds and it allows itself to, you can see the heart of the peony, the center of it. And it's just totally beautiful. That is when the peony is its most beautiful, if you ask me, when you can see the heart of it, when you can see the vulnerability of it, when you can see that it is not perfect, but in its imperfection, it is perfect. And that is you. Think about that. When you have come to this point where you have been guided up until this point in order to open up and to release from a space of total vulnerability, not because you have forced it, but because you have allowed yourself to flow and to grow at your own time, that's when people can see your heart and that's when you are at full bloom. And that's, everyone will, will see that and acknowledge it and be like, wow, I did not know that you were that gifted. I did not know that you had that within you. Now that I can see it, I will cherish it. This is something that I love and I will pick, not pick it, but I will give to it. I'll keep giving to this because I want to see more of your heart. I want to see more of you expressing yourself. I want to hear more of your voice. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here when I'm looking at the chart. So again, it's flowing with the energy, not forcing it, but if you stay tightly bound like that bud, no one will ever be able to see you blooming. No one will ever be able to see the heart of you because so much of you is so tightly wound, so tightly refusing to blossom, to bloom at your own, at your own pace. In fact, you are actually fighting your flow by staying so tightly bound when you are being called now to express, to flow, to release, to let go. And you'll know because you feel it on your heart. It will be hard for you to hold it back. You'll actually be fighting it to hold it back. So if there's something that's like, you know, bubbling on your heart, that's sitting on your heart, now is the time to talk about it. Now is the time to put it out there. I don't care what the risk is because the reward is too great. Again, it can change the course of the, of your, of the rest of your life. But again, if you believe in astrology or if you don't believe in astrology, at least I'm telling you that the potential is there. And at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your conscious decision to decide what is that you're going to do. Astrology cannot move you. The planets can't move you. Spirit can't move you. Your guides can't move you. It's you who uses yourself as a tool, as a res it's you who uses your human body as a tool or as a resource in order to create the change on a spiritual level that you can experience. The other thing that I wrote down is fill yourself, like really re fill yourself up, like drink, 
drink, drink, drink it up. And that means, I don't know what this means for, for, for different people, but it's almost like I feel like an outpouring that comes. And I don't know if it's because you have shared your heart with one person and now they're sharing their heart with you. So you hearing, seeing that or them seeing it makes them want to pour into you. So you are able to then drink it up and to receive it. Or it could be you filling yourself up in activities and things that really serve you and make you feel good. And again, this could be artistic expression. This could be spending time with children, play, love, romance. Why these things? Well, because Leo rules all of the elements of that. So it's different for everyone. The other thing is I wrote down is that the if okay fill yourself up oh you can't do that if your heart is heavy remember the heart is everything if the heart is carrying this heavy weight this heavy burden it seriously will refuse to take on more because it's already it's already holding so much so this is again what i'm saying bleed it out let it go release it say goodbye if the heart is achy or if it's um, distracted if the mind is distracted that's another thing too sometimes as human beings we feel we we distract ourselves with all this external noise all these other things our work our text messages our hobbies and even though it's something that we love it could actually be a distraction from what it is that we should be focusing on on a heart level so and it's good at everything serves its purpose but at some point you have to honestly acknowledge what the heart is feeling and act upon that so sometimes you know we distract ourselves if the mind is distracted and if the heart is too heavy you simply will not give yourself the opportunity um, to be filled and to allow yourself to fill something else up with your gifts and with the blessing of who you are the light of who you are the essence of that the other thing that I got with this is this kind of call and response. And it's interesting because this came through during a reading that I had with a client last week or the week before that, but it, it reminded me of the drums. Like I, you guys know I do Congo Square every Sunday um, in New Orleans, but it's the, the call of the drum. And it's one drum goes ba 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 and then the others go ba da da and they respond back back to that. So it's one drum calling out and you know gives its rhythm and then the other drums surrounding it all call back and that's it's interesting because as i'm seeing that and as i'm hearing that as i'm pulling the chart and as i'm working with my guides what i hear is a call and response from the divine to you through your heart so it's like you've called out you've called out and the divine or the soulmate or the career or the abundance is calling back to you and that shows you that wherever you're at right now is actually the light at the end of the tunnel. And if you keep calling, being like, hello, like it's almost like Marco, Polo. I have to walk in that direction. Marco, Polo. Okay, we're going over here. So your eyes are closed. And the, why are your eyes closed? Because you don't know. You could be sitting in the dark right now. You could be sitting in total, complete darkness, not knowing what is ahead of you. But all you have to do is call out, Marco, Polo. Okay, Marco, Polo, Marco, Polo, and they're touching your face because finally you you finally you found them. But the only way again is if you feel the call of your heart to call out, Marco, Polo. See, did you call? Did you call when I said Marco? <laughs> Marco. <laughs> Watch my neighbors be like Polo. <laughs> I'll be like, oh my god, there you are. No, but yeah something something is breaking here with this eclipse and i just hope that this message resonates with you guys like it just feels so powerful there's also something that i want to call out to you guys and i feel be i feel like i'm being called to say this you know i really bahati life and my messages all come from a very authentic space an authentic place and I, I know that my path here and what it is that I'm doing is destined and it's how it should be. But I also understand that we live in a very microwave society. And with that, people want like three second messages. They want 10, me 10 minute messages, you know, or messages under 10 minutes or less. And I just have so much to share with you guys. And I have so much that I have to say that I just can't microwave it I can't shorten it and that's not to say that other messages that are shorter than mine are less powerful than mine I'm not saying that at all but I do want to call out as I'm saying this now I feel kind of called to say it and maybe this is from my own chart whatever it is but really um, share this share this video with your friends share this video with your tribe tweet it out um, talk about it because 
I don't want to say the odds are stacked against me because they're not. But everything happens for a reason. And as I'm saying this, I feel like I'm like called to again say it that you sharing this helps more people to hear these messages versus them looking at it and being like, oh, this is going to be 30 minutes or 20 minutes. Like, I don't have time for that. But let them know that it's worth it. Let them know that, you know, maybe these messages can change their life if they're open to listening and making the time out for it. But again, don't force anything. But it really does. I just feel kind of called to say that. I don't know why. Like, you guys know my my goal for Bahati Life is to not to be, you know, popular or to be like trending or anything like that, even though it has happened. But my goal is to share my message with as many people as possible in a way that's going to impact them in a positive way as often as that can happen. And I just feel called right now to, to say that. So I guess I'm Marco Poloing you right now. <laughs> But that's what it is that I'm getting. And if you guys want to see what cards I pulled that inspired a part of a portion of this message, it is the Judgment card, the Ace of Cups, and the King of Wands, which is interesting because the King of Wands is ruled by Fire Energy, which is Leo. Now, again, I also do want to say that for men, I know that a lot of my messages sound like they're focused towards women because a lot of my audience is about 85, 86, 87% women. But men... It's time for you to step into the space of your heart and to choose what you love and to, and to, um, what's the word? Um, to pursue it fever, feverishly. And I know like King of Wands is one of those cards that it can be easily distracted. It's very passionate. It's very sexual. It's very like drawn by attraction and adventure, which means that there's always going to be something else out there. Great. There's always going to be something that, you know, gets you going, but the King of Wands is most powerful when he has focused his energy and he's giving his heart, his energy, his fire blood, his essence, his fire energy. And I'm not going to go into details of what that is, but the King of Wands is most potent when he's giving his fire energy to one thing. And when you hear that call and when you feel it within your heart, give it your all. I know we live in a society right now where, you know, things are so replaceable and things are so, you know, things are constantly overturning all the time. But men, it's time for you to, and I don't know why this is, but I'm, I'm just seeing this, you know, with fire energy within the chart. There's a lot of masculine energy within the chart, especially with Mars moving through the sign of Aries. It's commit yourself and, and give yourself all of that masculine, masculine energy to one thing and to focus it because you're scattering your, po your, you're scattering your potency all over. It's like you're, like these seeds, you're just planting them all over in things that are not, going to conduce, they're not going to grow for you. If as a masculine man, as a male, you have fertility within you on a physical level through like energetically, like through semen, you know what I mean? Like, but more than that, you as a masculine energy, you have to plant that seed, you know, take it for what it is, whether it be through sex, like legit or through energy or through communication, through your, through your career. Instead of planting your seed in all these different things, plant your seed in the one thing where it can grow, where it can really, something can be born here. And it's, you're going against, you're going against all society right now because everyone is, is scattering themselves, but they are, they're literally scattering their energy all throughout. Pick the one thing that your heart knows that is right for you and put your seed there. And that's one message that I wanted to share with men in general. Like, yeah, whatever. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I just, not that I'm like frustrated or anything, but I've said all that I, I had to say with that, with that message. I don't, it's just the King of Wands, when he's reversed, that energy is blocked because he's scattered. He's unfocused. He doesn't have that support. But when he has something to grow there, that's when he is at his best. That's when he sees all of his blessings coming through because he's not, you know, scattered. And I see that for masculine energy exclusively. Women, I already, we already talked about our message, like all of the message applies. Or maybe women, you have to plant your seed in something that it can actually grow. But it is what it is. 
whoever needs to hear that, I don't even, I wasn't planning on sharing that at all, but that just came through, but whoever needs to hear that, that's there for you. And on that note, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please comment, rate, comment, subscribe, and share the video again. And um, yeah, there's plenty more videos where that came from, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.